Hello, my name is Mike Dugin. I'm a sales engineer here at Industrial Defender, and I'm going to provide a brief demonstration of some of the capabilities of Industrial Defender's Automation Systems Manager. So what we're looking at here is the dashboard of all of the different information that the Automation Systems Manager is going to provide you. In the top left-hand corner, we're looking at the event distribution for the different types of events that are coming in. You can tell by looking at the pie chart that we see different events coming in for process starts and stops, sockets open and closing, authentication events, firewall violations, etc. Um, in the middle, we're seeing the aspect of asset management. We see the, all of the different types of devices that we're collecting data from. In this demonstration environment, you can see that I have data coming from Ventix Network Manager devices, uh, GE Power on Fusion System, Elster's Energy Access System, uh, some ABB Power Generation Utilities, Process Portal B, 800XA, a uh, couple of switches, you see uh, ABB switches in there, Cisco switches, and then some generic uh, Windows and Linux type of devices. Um, and then in the top right hand corner what you're seeing is the different configuration exceptions. We'll get back to that in a little bit when we go to asset management. Um, this screen is both interactive and configurable, so if there's a specific type of uh, information that you want to show on the screen, we have widgets available. You can see unauthorized access alerts, uh, charts showing different types of operating systems, charts showing new assets that have been onboarded, etc. At the top of the screen, you'll see the tabs that show the different types of information that we have available to us. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail on a few of these in a, in a minute, but we'll do is real briefly explain the different tabs and what type of information that you have available in those. In the asset tab, we have a couple of cool features. We have an asset administration page where you'll be able to see all of the different assets that are available in the system. Um, what the operating systems are, which electronic security perimeter they're a part of, what function they're serving, etc. Active asset search, active health search, they give you the ability to look for more specific details of the devices um, and then even maybe reach out to the device and pull specific information and health details back. The configuration tab is going to give you details about the configuration of the systems. Um, the system setting search is just going to pull operating system and hardware statistics. Ports and services, exactly as it sounds, it's going to show you the ports that are open on the systems, the services that are keeping those ports open, and will even give you the ability to query for specific ports or specific services throughout the environment. And then the firewall rule search is going to pull up a list of all of the rules on your UTM devices, your perimeter firewalls, and your Windows firewalls. The software tab gives you the ability to query all of the applications that are installed on any machine in the environment or all of the Windows patches that may be installed on any of the machines in the environment. The users tab gives you the ability to look at all of the users that are on each machine, the ability to search for an individual user or all of the users on a specific device. The policy tab is where we can create baselines specific for the reporting function. Uh, this gives you the ability to create maybe a software baseline that shows all of the software that should be on a specific type of system, a ports and services baseline to show you all the ports that, may, that should be open maybe on a specific type of switch or a specific type of server, um, or create reports for any other comparisons that you may need to make for compliance purposes such as for NERCSET. The events dashboard is where you'll see all of the data that we are retrieving from the machines uh, from syslog, WMI, or the software agents installed on the, on the systems acting in a host intrusion detection uh, function. What we'll get there is the types of events that you're seeing in the chart on the top left in the event category. You'll have the ability to look at a consolidated view to see what the heaviest hitting types of alerts are, which types of events are really maybe causing some issues in your environment, and then the event search gives you the ability to query down into a more granular level or look for specific events. Uh, the reporting tab is going to give you the ability to generate custom on-demand reports uh, specific to the compliance needs of your organization or generic reporting just for your troubleshooting purposes. The file repository is a feature that gives you the ability to pull specific files from different systems in your environment archive them, and then possibly use them as backups uh, or uh, system recovery in the future. So for Cisco switches, your Linux IP table configurations, uh, configuration files uh, for any types of device that may be reporting into any of your machines, you can store them here, they're time stamped, and then you can retrieve them from here and reapply them to your machines. And then the system administration is just to administer the, the automation systems manager. 
So what I'm going to do now is get into a couple of different use cases on how you might use the data that we're retrieving from the system. The first place we're going to go is into the Asset Administration page. As you can see here, there's a whole bunch of different information that's very valuable right here on the page. You can see the different types of assets that are installed, all of the IP addresses, um, the different the operating systems that are used, and even the location of the system. It's easy to sort this information, so if you want to look for a system in a specific location, you can just drag the location tab up to the top and open up the locations that you want to look for devices in. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into one of these devices and I'll show you all of the, the specific information that we're collecting. Uh, what we're looking at here is one of ABB's 800 XA systems. For each individual system that we're collecting data from, there's one tab of information that you can import the data for or type it in. Uh, you see the asset name, asset type, operating system type, that's fully configurable. You can put whatever you want in there and we even have an easy information onboarding process that you can import this information for all of your devices with the click of a button. All of the rest of the tabs that you see here, in most cases, we are automatically collecting that information. <clears throat> so if I was to scroll across the top just to show you what we have in asset details, you're going to see the type of system that it is, what the operating system is and the version of the operating system. You'll see the hardware manufacturer details. Um, this is a virtual machine, so what this is showing is that the hardware manufactures VMware, but if it's an Intel box or, or, or any other type of box, that'll show here. All of your log settings are in, um, and in some types of devices, we even show password complexity requirements, etc. In software installed, it's going to be exactly that, all of the applications that are installed on the system. You'll get the application name the version of the application, and then you see in the comment page, and you'll see this across all of them, you have the ability to type in any comment that you want for any application port patch that may be required for compliance or reporting purposes. Patches installed is all of the Windows patches that might be installed in the system. You see this machine has only had a few of them deployed, but you see the type of information that we're retrieving. You get the patch ID, the service pack of the patch if it's there, and then if we can retrieve it, you'll even get a comment describing what the patch is doing. Under ports and services, you're going to see all of the ports that are open, the protocol, IP version. We do get IP version 6 if you're using that in your environment. The interface that the port is open on and the process that's keeping the port open. Um, this is important even from a troubleshooting perspective because if you know that there is a specific port that's open in your environment that shouldn't be, we're giving you the process details so that you can go find that process and kill that service so that you can actually get that port closed. Firewall rules for a Windows device such as this one is going to show you the Windows firewall rules. You'll see the source and destination address, the service that is open, and whether, the, whether that rule is disabled or enabled. And then finally, user accounts is going to show you all of the users that have an account on the system, the type of user. If it's part of a domain, we will show you the domain that's a part of and whether the account is enabled or not. If we scroll across the top to the ports and services search, this is getting into a little more granular detail with the information that we're collecting. Uh, one of the things I always like to show when I'm doing this demonstration is the ability to query for specific ports in the environment, dangerous ports maybe. So what we'll, we'll do is we'll put in ports 22, 23, 80, and 443, showing some of the administrative ports that are sometimes open by default on a system that you may not want open. Click quickly hit search, and I have every instance of those four ports open the environment. I can remove the search function, filter it by the port, and dig down and find maybe some of the most dangerous ports that might be open in the environment. Telnet immediately rings a bell. Telnet's one of those ports you're not going to want to open in a control system environment. With the click of a few buttons, I can see every device that has that port open. We can do the same thing for port 80, a little more prevalent there. All of these machines have port 80 open, and in some instances we can even tell which process is keeping that port open. If we go over to the software tab, a very similar search to ports and services, we can search for all the applications in the environment. What I'll do here is show this specific to maybe a, a specific asset type. We'll go to the Elster Energy Access Devices, click search, and with the click of a few buttons there, we have every piece of software that's installed on any device that's classified as an Elster Energy Access Device. Um, just as before, I can sort this by any type of information. What I'll do here is I'll sort it by application name. And you see all the different applications that might be installed in the environment. You can expand them a bit. 
see the version information. This is really important if there's ever an instance where you have a specific application in your environment that you get a report that there's a defect or uh, some type of malicious code available for that application. It may be for a specific version of the application. Real quick, you can go into the search, find every instance of that specific piece of app, that specific application in your environment and find where you need to update your devices or remove that application to get rid of that vulnerability. If we move over to the users tab, just as the other two searches, very simple. If I click search without picking any of the other options, it's going to show me every user for every system in the entire environment. Um, I can narrow that down some if I'd like to. Uh, in many cases, the way I'll do this is by looking for a specific user. I know a NERC SIP regulation is that if you have a user that has been let go with calls, you have 24 hours to get that account off the system. So what I like to do is show what Industrial Defender could do if they ever fire me, find my account, click search, and click of a button, they can show all eight systems that I have an account on. And then they know that within 24 hours, get rid of that account. And because we're keeping track of this on a real-time basis, there's going to be a notification when these accounts are removed. So you'll have a record that the change has been made. So if I go back to that configuration exception uh, detail, all of this information that we're collecting for each of these devices, if any of that changes, one of those configuration exceptions is going to be raised. So if I go back to the asset page and we do an asset search, I can show you what that would look like. I do a search for all assets right here. It'll take a minute to load. On the right hand side of the page, you see the column that says exceptions. Any device that shows up with a red X right there has a configuration exception. So you see, if I go to, we'll just go back to this 800XA system since that's the one we showed earlier. We can see there's a ports and services change. So <clears throat> that ADV DSOPC connector program has closed the ports that say configured and opened the ports that say actual. From the screen you have the ability to accept or reject these changes and then when you do either of those options you have a record of all of the changes that may have happened for that system. If we go over to the event consolidation page this is going to show you all of the events that are coming in from your systems in a consolidated fashion. Just as before you can search via these so if I want to change the count and show all of the alerts based on what I'm getting the most alerts for. You can see right up at the top, I'm getting a Windows event log from this Process Portal B machine. 13,000 events in the last 24 hours. So by looking at this immediately, I know what event is the heaviest hitting event coming through, coming in my environment, and I know to look for that Windows event log and find out what the cause of that is. From here, it's real simple to go back to the event search and find more details on any of these. So if I I wanted to look into this IP tables firewall configuration violation. I just click that event and I'm brought right into the event search and I see all of the events specific to that consolidated view. And then if you were to click on any of these events, you could pull in more details. So I can see that that specific MAC address is constantly sending a UDP NetBIOS event towards this machine and it's being blocked by the IP tables configuration of this machine. So if I go back to that event search page, <clears throat> there's a bunch of different ways that you can query down and look for real specific events in the environment. One of the things real important to many of the organizations that I talk to is if someone was to plug a laptop or a new device into the environment, they need to know about that and we get events based on that through, an, a, through a method called ARP Watch. From this screen I can look specific for my ARP Watch events in just a minute. Network configuration. And you can see how quick I can pull up an IP or MAC address change on this network. So if I was to click on that event I can see that there is a device in my environment with the IP address 172.16.104.11 that a new piece of hardware has assumed that existing IP address. We'll get events similar to this for new hardware being added to a network, etc. 
So on this reporting tab, this is where you'll have the ability to generate those reports specific to the compliance mechanism that you need to refer to or develop generic reports for troubleshooting purposes. As you can see, we have generic reports based on assets, asset configuration, perimeter rules, software, users, and then we also have reports specific to NERC SIP loaded into this ASM, but we have folder structures specific to other compliance regulatory pieces as well. So what I'll show is a report that shows <clears throat> the ports that are open on two devices compared against each other. So if I go to configuration, ports and services, ports and services, device versus device, click on view report, choose the two devices that I want to compare. So I will compare We'll say a process portal B client one versus a process portal B historian, just to show what the differences might look like. I'm running that report for today at 10.04 a.m. And you can see that most of the ports that are open on the system are similar, but you can pick out the variances based on the bolded letters and the X and the V column. So you can see that while most of the ports are the same, the historian has port 80 open for the application itself, and then some of the ephemeral ports are also different as well. The file repository is where we're storing files for different types of devices. Um, as I discussed earlier, we could do switch configurations, firewall configurations, um, configuration files for specific applications, PLCs, RTUs. What I'll show, let's see. We'll look at the switch configuration of a Cisco switch. So let me just find that asset. So we can see the Cisco switch.conf. This is a configuration file for Cisco switch. And as you can see, it's dated and timestamped. And then you can download that configuration. So if I go back, we'll go back about a week. I can open up that file. And then you could take this configuration and reapply it to the device. So this concludes our demonstration of Automation Systems Manager. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, and of course we can schedule a demonstration on site at your convenience.